my god, look. years ago, in South Africa's northern Cape province, our ancient human ancestors, most likely the Homo erectus descent, utilized a powerful tool. In a place called the Wonderwork Cave, archaeologists discovered evidence of the earliest use of fire. Fire is a cornerstone of life. Wherever humans have gone in the world, they have carried with them two things, language and fire. Darwin himself considered these the two most significant achievements of humanity. However, with the development of fire came the need to control it. History reminds us that it is too easy to lose control of this commodity. The study of food mechanics advanced human civilization by enhancing our understanding of fire suppression. Understanding that allows New York to build such buildings as the Freedom Tower, which stands at 104 stories, 1,776 feet. Developing alongside society, the fire service has greatly changed from the days of the bucket brigades of the Roman Legion Vigilies. Firefighting and fire suppression has become a science, with engineers specializing in fire suppression technologies. As a firefighter for the last five years, I can tell you that no matter how much technology changes the way we do our job, one thing will never become obsolete. The one concept that has remained since those first Roman vigilies is that you need to put water on the fire. What has changed is how we get it there. In 1738, Daniel Bernoulli published his book Hydrodynamica, which revealed to the world Bernoulli's principle. This concept developed over 276 years ago as direct applications to firefighting. Water fire hoses but are merely a means to transport water. More fire equals more water. Bernoulli's principle helps us understand how we get the water from the hydrant to the fire engine to the fire itself. Taking into account potential, pressure, and gravitational energies, the pump operator must determine how much pressure he must pump the water through a hose of a particular diameter so that the water will leave the nozzle of the fire hose with the correct flow rate for the particular fire load and at the correct pressure. The basic equation that every pump operator needs to know when operating his fire pump is EP equals NP plus FL plus APP plus ELEV. EP is the engine pressure, NP is the nozzle pressure, FL is the friction loss, ELEV is the elevation loss or gain, APP is the appliance friction loss. What is this calculation but a simple modification of Bernoulli's principle? Engine pressure is the pressure that the pump operator must figure out so that the pressure at the nozzle is sufficient for fire suppression. The nozzle is the appliance at the end of the hose that gives the water stream its straight and reach and velocity. Nozzle pressure is the pressure that is experienced at the nozzle. Nozzles are rated according to specific manufacturing specifications. These are generally smooth bore hand lines at 50 psi, fog nozzle hand line at 100 psi, smooth bore master stream at 80 psi. A discharge pressure out of the nozzle too strong will make handling the hose very difficult for firefighters and will also break the stream up into small droplets which aren't as effective in extinguishing fire. If the discharge pressure out of the nozzle is too weak, the firefighter may not have sufficient gallons of water per minute to overcome the British thermal units that the fire produces, causing the fire not to be extinguished. This nozzle pressure is simply the pressure out as is represented in the noise equation. Friction loss is caused by the turbulent flow caused by the water making contact with the lining of the hose as it flows over the couplings and around bends in the hose causing it to change direction. This change in direction of flow, even if it is slight, slows down the forward velocity of the water droplets. This concept of turbulent flow also explains friction loss due to appliances. Pump operators generally know the friction loss due to the various appliances in use due to factory testing. For example, the Denver Fire Department distributes these figures to pump operators. For the given appliances, this is their calculated friction loss. The Siamese connection has a friction loss of 5 psi. The Y connection has a friction loss of 5 psi. The Bresnan distributor has a friction loss of 3 psi or 5 psi 
depending on its size. The multiversal has a friction loss of 10 psi. The deck gun has a friction loss of 10 psi. The ladder pipe has a friction loss of 15 psi. The standpipe system has a friction loss of 25 psi. These friction losses refer to the energy lost due to friction as represented in the extended Bernoulli's equation. Designers and engineers are researching ways to minimize the effects of turbulent flow in an effort to make the water behave similar to laminar flow. Elevation loss or gain refers to pressure gained or lost due to changes in elevation of the nozzle with respect to the pump. This is simply the pressure head of Bernoulli's equation. When simplified down, this equation gives us the pump equation. Now how does this understanding of simple fluid mechanics advance human civilization? This is a breakthrough application of science and integrated engineering for the fire service. This simple understanding of how water gets from point A to point B revolutionized it. Since firefighters better understand how to move water, they can more efficiently get water from the source, the hydrant, to the seat of the fire. This greatly enhances the survivability for all those who may be trapped inside, as well as reduces the risk for firefighters. Looking globally, the application of these concepts allow for safer construction of buildings. With towering skyscrapers, firefighters have to determine how to get water from the ground to the 100th floor of a skyscraper in case of an emergency. The FDNY Fire Department of New York has to purchase special engines, they call high-rise engines, which contain enhanced pumpers capable of pumping water up to the standpipe systems of large buildings so firefighters can access a secure water supply hundreds of feet above the ground. The application of fluid mechanics goes way beyond fire hoses. I use that as an example simply because it is an integral part of our operation. Fluid mechanics is also used in the design of sprinkler system. Our increased understanding of fluid mechanics increases the efficiency of those suppression systems which distribute water to the seat of the fire and concurrently notify the fire department a fire has occurred. The design and effectiveness of these systems is awe-inspiring. I have been to many fires that were extinguished by these suppressive systems. Last winter, I responded to a local frat in State College. The alarm came in as a water flow alarm, which is the signal dispatch received after a sprinkler head has been activated. En route to the location, Center County Dispatch advises that they received a 911 call stating a Christmas tree was on fire next to their house. Each year, fire departments respond to an average of 210 structure fires caused by Christmas trees. Prior to our arrival, the sprinkler system automatically activated, producing sufficient water to not only contain the fire, but extinguish it completely. At the same time, only just enough sprinkler heads were activated to prevent fire spread while preventing extensive water damage to the entire home. In the basement of this frat, a party was going on with hundreds of guests who had no idea a potentially life-threatening fire had started. In addition to water, fluid mechanics is also being used to analyze fire development and spread. Fire engineers across the United States are studying the effects of ventilation on fires. They are studying airflow patterns that cause the fire to spread and develop. They are using this research to develop life-saving procedures for how firefighters should properly open up a building that is on fire to manipulate the airflow and control the fire during extinguishment. The development of society directly correlates with the development of the fire service. When city development exceeds the development of the industries and technologies designed to protect it, disasters occur. This integration of science and engineering into the fire service has allowed cities to grow and develop to the size they are now. These initiatives allow cities to grow bigger and taller and yet maintain the same level of protection, if not better, than they had been receiving. Without fear of another great Chicago fire, cities are expanding and people are not afraid to expand with them.